Okay, my outstanding, wonderful, wonderful friends. Listen, I know everyone is really, really hyped up now about black holes and dark matter and, and uh, I see Physics Girl and all of these celebrities talking about it, but they're just all sort of digging around at the edges. Well, I can tell you what, since 2015, the Russians already showed it. I'm going to show you right now. What they did was they took plasma. This is called Plasma in Space Experiment. English subtitles, and it's absolute ecology uh, is the the people that did put this up back in 2015. It's only got 16,000 hits, and this is dark matter in space. And what they did was they took plasma. What is plasma? Plasma is like think of the finest, tiniest dust particles there could be, and then add an electron to it. That means it has a charge. It's a charged particle. That's what plasma is. Charged, tiny molecular, or, uh, atomic particles, really. They're in a very, very, very fine atomic range. They're not big chunks. Now, these plasma are going to float in, and when they do, in this vacuum chamber, they went into outer space. So, that's good. They can float around. That's all wonderful. Well, what else? They made, in addition to that, they made a vacuum chamber which had, they took no molecules in there, no oxygen, no nitrogen, no nothing. It's totally, completely empty of any molecules. That's a vacuum chamber. So now, in addition to being a vacuum chamber, you could put one on Earth, but it's not going to work right. Out in outer space, whatever enters is, is in a vacuum, so it can float around and do whatever it wants to do other than collapse to the floor, although we will see some collapse to the floor because even the mass of the space station that they were in is enough to pull them down more than the ones that float. But we'll see it. I'll, I'll try to explain as, you, as we go through this. I'm going to show you a black hole right now. And they didn't expect this, and uh, the Max Planck guy, I guess, freaked out when he saw it. So this is what it says here. Uh, let me make sure I got the sound off because it's... I think it's in Russia. All right, here we go. They started to let those particles in, and here's what happened. Instead of an open lattice, they expected them all to collect, and there it is. There's your black hole right there. It's a black hole. It's zero lightness coming through here, and 100% glowy little particles collecting, pushing the dark matter in, because dark matter can separate from the white matter. I've shown it. They're showing it right here. No question about it. And the reason this is happening is because the enclosure that surrounds all of these particles also has white matter completely glued to every surface of its surface. So that's pushing. So they're pushing this way. This is pushing that way. The dark matter collects in the center. Now, in outer space, as these things rotate, these are crashing into all the other things that are around them, just like we are and the sun is, is as to we tumble through all of the not vacuum of space, because there is no vacuum in space. It's 100% loaded with these particles. They're everywhere, everywhere. That's our sunlight. That's solar wind, solar dust, solar storms, whatever you want to call it. It's all plasma in space. It's light. It's photons. It's particles of every single size. And... Primarily the smaller particles because they're they're radiated, but that's why the corona of the sun out here, where it scrubs real real hot at millions of degrees, the surface of the sun is only six thousand degrees because it's scrubbing through space, but it has an, a, an envelope of atmosphere that is this. And that is scrubbing through the envelope of atmosphere out there, which is basically this box. Because it's, it's got to scrub through something. They're, go, they're going everywhere. They're all coming everywhere. So we're scrubbing through them just like a soup. And the bigger our ball gets, which we're f filling it up like a balloon now, and that's what's the problem. It's not CO2 keeping the heat down. No. It's the... the, the, the CO2 is, is a, an expansion gas from creating something solid into a gas. And that just, and the bigger we get, the harder the scrub is going to be. And the harder the scrub is going to be, the more heat we're going to have. And I'm, I'm, I, 
there is no there's no question about it. There's no question about it. This this outer space that we're supposed to be living in is a vacuum. Is absolutely no question. It's not a vacuum, and it's electronic push to shove. So anyway, and my uh, my Russian friends, I hope will be a little more interested in in this. I, they're the ones that discover it. I, well, they don't really discover it, but they they show it, and it, it fits exactly well. Here, hold on a second. This was, um, just so you know, I'm just not spouting off here. I just spout off a lot, but this is not just spouting today. I did this, you know, years ago. It's 1971, I think, this paper is from. And this is when I realized that everything is a dipole, the dipole moment. See, there's nothing more than dipoles. And I tried to, to work this into my, my academic career, and it, that's, that's, you can't say anything that's not the, what they want to hear. Yeah, it's light energy. This just goes back, I was doing a lecture on this and particles and all, I mean, it was, I got deep as anybody ever got. Here's was Bohr's postulates of Bohr's theory. This was all wrong. The transfer of energy is from light to atomic vapor, and that's exactly what it is. Boy, I forgot all about that. <laughs> The transfer of energy is always from light to atomic vapor. Because what you're doing is you're pushing to shove. And the only thing that pushes and shove is particles that have fields. And the field bangs into the other field. And then it, it expels an electron pushing it down a line. And they just keep pushing to shove, push to shove, push to shove. And then at a certain pulsation you get what they call resonance frequencies and then certain things settle in or just fall apart and they have to be glued together in a certain way that they just stay good that's why I think what we could do right now is take nuclear radiation and put it through there's a series of things well, there's a series of things you can do with nuclear radiation and one of them is frequency modulation. The other thing is Tesla coil, so that you can add a ton of extra electrons into it if it needs them to find places to stabilize. Or you can take a Van de Graaff generator and put it in there, and you can suck out particles. Let me just show you something, because I'm going to get to this at some point. I'm kind of slow getting to my points, but this... Again, this is what the electron is. An electron is a power part and a black black hole. Right there. There's the electron and there's a the black hole. When they get in globs, they can push the black ones together because the black ones are gravity. That's all they are. That's, that's it. They don't emit. They don't concuss. They don't absorb. They don't do anything other than attract. Ton, done. When they concuss, they just walk off to the sides. And they say, come back to me. And they come back. The white ones will reattach. Now, in this confined vacuum, this is what you get. It, it displays exactly what they're looking at. But the reason the black hole in here is shown this way, which you never see it, except they have this enclosure. So that is forming its concussiveness outside of it. They're just, just, just laying here, jiggling around. They're not spinning or anything. But in outer space, they spin. So when they spin, they scrub. And that's when it creates its own interaction. And the more it scrubs, the hotter it gets. The hotter it gets, the more if things are forced in. The more the things are forced in, the you know, the more attractive the black hole becomes. The harder it sucks, the more glow comes from the outside. It's pushed to shove or it's pushed to pull, whatever you want to see it. But I could show you this in absolute undeniable detail. And I, well, I say that. To me, it's undeniable. Deny it if you want. But uh, we'll see. And anyway, the guy on Earth, this is, they contacted the Earth guy who couldn't believe it either. He locked himself in his room, I think, for three weeks. He said, see how this is just bouncing or just bouncing here? See? <laughs> if that was in outer space, they would be spinning and they'd be scrubbing against each other. So that's the two differences between a static black hole. It can only be created in a vacuum and a um, 
a spinning black hole, which is a, a space black hole. All right, this is what light is. It's a particle back here, but it has a magnetic field in it. Therefore, it creates a wave as it goes. Well, we sent it through a Venturi. A Venturi accelerates things. It's accelerated the light. And the most interesting thing is that it separated the polarities of the light, because light has a plus and a minus polarity. And I can show you all of these things in extreme detail. That Let's just go to this one here. What that you just saw accelerating is this. Uh, where are you? Where are you? There it is. It's going through the air like that, the leading edge concusses, and way out in front is the wave because it's it's pushing all the other particles out of the way because everything is made of electrons. That right there is an electron. This one here is an electron. Two of them back to back make a photon. Electrons electrocute you. Photons bounce off of you and create light. Now, so here's the particles, and this is what was going to kind of hit the Venturi. And just prior to it hitting the Venturi, it does this. It first begins to be seen back here. Then it starts to box up. And then it starts to glow, and then it explodes like an atomic bomb, which is exactly what it is. This is nuclear atomic photon fission. The blacks walk away from the white, and the white becomes the electron showers, precisely as CERN and Fermilab want to see. Six years ago, I sent this to every one of them. There's those black balls, no longer attached to the white. There's the white, no longer attached to the black. That's charge separation. That means it allows for the excess dark matter, because that's what this is, is dark matter. It doesn't emit, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't really concuss. It's a, it's a grabber. It pulls, look, you see it? Right back here, it says, come on back to me, come back, come on, come on. Well, these are new ones. There's all kind of black ones laying around, as far as I can determine from the research I did. And, and that's what they say. There's like 85% of the universe is black, dark matter. I can go along with that because the white ones want to push each other away and the black ones will just jump get in, in the holes in between them. So I'm going to go with what they're saying. That's okay. And here's what, here's, what, uh, here's what CERN wants to see, which you just saw. They want to see the muon and the electron neutrino, which is the white ball and the black ball. And then when they hit what they call Cherenkov radiation, which means another medium. Well, we did it by crushing the fields. The electrons separated into showers as he pushes all the other electrons out because it's a pusher. This is a grabber. Simple as that. That does not change. That goes into showers every single different which way and then immediately comes back. And that is an increase in the value of that particle approximately 200 times. And you can see it's ex extremely easy to see how much increased value there is in the, in the particle. Here you can, it's just barely noticeable. And here it goes and it smashes so hard that the bounce back of all of the energetic value, which is just all it is, is, is energetic value is nothing more than slap or rub. It's surface to surface. The harder the surface hits, the more energy. That's all it is. That's what energy is. Now. And it just so happens that when you force particles against other particles, they force electrons as a result of this interaction. We don't think of it that way because they're batteries and they work with chemistry. Yeah, that's true. But it's a decay or a stabilization of the product that's in there from a very unstable state down to a lower state, shooting off an electron. Here we did it just by accelerating the light, which Einstein says you can't do. So until we start talking to Roger, <laughs> you guys can guess all you want. I'm showing the evidence. If I have evidence and I am not allowed to have it examined, that has a big, big, big statement to me. Now, you can see this is what's called reverse EMF. You see that? I was a field engineer and I was, I was good. And they gave me some of the first stuff that came into the United States to test out to see how it worked. And it didn't work. 
And they were doing it in a laboratory. You know what they were doing? They were using 17 volt chips. And a chip 17 volts is is not a you know it's not crazy volts, but it's you, everything runs on five volts basically. When I was in it, I don't know. It might, might be down to one and a half, two volts now. I have no idea. But it, I, we ended up at five volts. And here's what happened: when they shipped in these equi the equipment, we were going to deliver them into all the top top places. I mean, we we. We, we were in all of the banks, insurance companies, all that stuff. So we, I said, had all the guys say, okay, get, take, take the equipment, get it ready, test it out, get the test tapes. And we always had test tapes to go with them. I said, take them out, deliver them in the morning. Well, it was like, I don't know, November, December, whatever. It was cold. So they go home, they leave them in their cars, they come in in the morning, they plug them in, they turn them on, the machines literally exploded. I mean, they just literally exploded. The chips, when he brought them back in the shop, I said, all right, let's tear them down. And we tore them down, and the, the chips, literally, the, 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 a chip a chip has a little circle in the center, and then the rest of the chip is nothing but where legs go out to meet in the circuit board. So they just send their data here and there. So the center is where the chip is. It just exploded. It blew up like a bomb. So... What happened, the bottom line is, I, I had to investigate it. Well, what the hell happened here? Well, it, it, when you get colder and colder and colder, electron flow gets more and more and more increased. And I, I think it was like a real cold day. I, I, I can't remember how cold it was, but, you know, I had, I had all the best stuff. I had oscilloscopes. I had everything I needed to, to test this stuff out way back then. This is a long time ago, 78, I guess it was. And um, what I found out was the temperature at, at a certain temperature, it was like almost five times the electron flow that it would be at 70 degrees room temperature test areas and so forth. If you didn't ever let them get cold, they wouldn't have blown up. I know I've gone off to a real different place, but this is what I'm getting at. Is I, you know, this is my background. Is 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 I'm a fixer. I look at things and I try to figure out what's going on and what causes what. Because everything has a, a cause and an effect. This is just the way it works. And when if you if you're a specialist in, you know, one little bitty thing, you're just not a specialist in anything, because you have to know all of the different things that can happen. And this is nothing more than reverse EMF coming way back here and that's what static and so forth creates but this is on steroids this here is an atomic bomb an atomic bomb we can use that to create energy it's not polluting it's not dangerous it's contained and it should lead to free energy if you could, re you know, really all you need is like a solar collector here to collect that impact and push more electrons into your batteries or wherever you push them into. That's all it is. You're pushing electrons. Now, and these things could be tiny. I mean, literally tiny. A little shoebox you run your house. If I'm right, and I think I am, and if you can't see that accelerating light, then, I, you know, you're, you're not going to work with me, so you might as well go somewhere else. Now that last remark, remark was actually meant towards um, the people that I've tried to, to deal with in academia, everywhere in the world really, but specifically in the United States. And nobody responded whatsoever, having this possible chance of doing something good. Every, everything I ever hear on the news is all about, oh, we're looking for this, we're looking for that, we're looking for that. Not a single one will ever correspond back to me. With anything, and I have stuff that's totally a hundred percent valid. So that was not meant against the Russians. The Russians have been as, as good as anybody. They actually contacted me long ago about a sinkhole problem they had. I think it was Yamani, something like that, uh, a peninsula. And there's no solution to that either. But it's just the way things are. The, the Earth, the things is changing, and um, you know the extraction of these the things in the Earth and the expansion of our of our um, atmospheric envelope is, is, is unsustainable, absolutely unsustainable, and I mean quickly unsustainable, all right? Somebody wants to do something, I'm 100% game. 